For in eternity, the darkness swelled within the ceaseless churn of its feeding, and then silence. Hi, Cisrin here, and I wanted to talk to you guys about the Uncharted Realms. I have a separate video talking about all the Atlas passives and what to put in each region, but the Uncharted Realms is its own separate region. I wanted to talk a little bit about it. So first off, to, to unlock them, as you can see here, once you've done one of them, you'll get this and this will fill in which ones you've like witnessed. So you can see here that I've witnessed the Constrictor and Slayer and Eradicator, and I still need to witness the Purifier. Then once I have that, I need to search through my uh, tab and see, do I have a Twisted? I do have a Twisted, so and it shows on the Imitation tool uh, what, what I need to do. I need to witness the Purifier, and then I'm able to put this in. I can then roll it, but if I try to put it in now, this is just not going to work. It won't do anything, because I haven't witnessed all of them yet. So, boom, nothing happens. You have not collected enough bosses. So, that's all fine and well. Uh, and how do we get the invitations? So these can actually drop from, I think, every like tier 14 or tier 16 map plus. Um, even things like the feared, the, the haunted, the formed. I can't remember what all they're called, but there is one for each of them and they can drop from anywhere. But if you're doing the content itself, like for example, Elder Guardians, Shaper Guardians, Bright Source, they have around a 20% chance to drop from those things. But obviously you can get pretty unlucky on that. Uh, and, and thankfully they do drop from other things as well. So, worst case scenario, if you're in Trailly, you buy them. If you're in Solo Cell Fun, you could get massively screwed by drop rates. And it's important to note that you actually have to put in the map itself in your map device and click witness. Because you can't, like, witness whatever Zana has. Like, Zana will offer you maybe a Cortex and stuff sometimes, but that won't work for witnessing. And just to rank them in difficulty, they, they sort of already are. I would say the Elder Guardians are the easiest, followed by the Shaper Guardians, followed by the Synthesis bosses. And then the hardest is the Breach Lords, followed by the Feared, obviously. Now, you can roll them for more difficulty. And if you get close to 80%, or I think it's 85%, that's sort of like max rewards, where it will actually give you, if you're doing the Feared, it will give you a full Maven's Rift, I think, on 85%. But like the more you're able to roll it, the more you will get rewarded, especially in like the Maven Splinters. Doing these fights is also a great source of uh, Orb of Fun making if you do want to like rewrite your Atlas. So let's talk a little bit about the points. The Uncharted Realms is actually where I use the most of my respec points because there are so many good things here that you, it's very, very beneficial to swap between. The normal ones that I always keep is close allies and path not taken. And the reason for that is that I'm normally hunting, for example, harvest or synthesis bosses and uh, things like that. And harvest did get nerfed. It's obviously not as strong as last thing. And now we can force it whenever we want. So I would say focusing more on synthesis bosses. Maybe having a region, like what I did lastly was I rolled four stones with the, um, whenever you get a mission, it's a uh, more chance, 100% increased chance of being Zana. I had four of those. And then it also means that whenever you find a random master, it's going to be Zana as well. I had 400% chance. So nearly every time I got like a daily mission uh, or I found a random master, it would be Zana in, in Haywar Hamlet. Pass not taken makes that you get like shit tons of maps to select from and that makes it a way way bigger chance that it's going to be one of the synthesis bosses uh, or cortex or just something nice right uh, and also you'll you'll get maps that say like finish the harvest which is still like decent echoes of war i've never really bothered with this i don't feel like it was worth it but at least this is like those those three are like my main like that that's what i would keep most of the time and then i quite like getting plus one awakening level that gives uh, the fact that I get Adept Tracker makes it that I can spawn Cyrus a lot faster. And uh, plus one Awakening level results in slightly better loot and things like that from the Awakener. For the other passives, like obviously you can spec into this every time before killing Cyrus. Or you could just focus really, really hard on doing Cyrus and keep it all the time. I normally have my 10 points is Close Allies, uh, Pass Not Taken, and then Atlas Awakened. That's generally what I've done. You could also just completely, like, run through, say, like, say I have 38 Zana missions, like, now, right? I could, like, have Pass Not Taken, run through all of those, and then spec out of it for a little bit. And and that is a really, really nice thing about the Uncharted Realms. There's some that are just so very, very strong, and you can have, like, Zana Days, or Elder Days, or stuff like that. And what I mean with that is, 
normally what I will do is keeping this is really, really good for mapping. It really is. It's a great node because you do get a bunch of Elder and Shaper Guardian maps. Uh, and if you're on softcore, this is really good too, but it can be very, very scary on hardcore because, you know, there's two of them and yeah, it, obviously it's hard. Um, but what I do is I would save up maybe like 20 Elder sets and five or six Uber Elder sets and then do them at once while having spec into Gaze into the Abyss and then spec out of that when I'm like not doing normal stuff. I might keep this just to get more Elder Guardians and Shaper Guardians if I'm trying to get Watch size. But I would make sure that before I'm doing a bunch of Elders and Uber Elders, I have Gaze into the Abyss. And I do a similar thing with Synthesis maps. I would normally not run these as I find them. Like obviously I run Sana ones because they're not affected by Uncharted Realms anyway. But if I find like a bunch of Cortexes, like on SSF last thing, I had like three or four Cortexes and probably 19 other Synthesis maps that I just found myself. Uh, and then I specced into all of these. I specced into all of these and I would do like a Synthesis day to see if I would get any nice synthesis bases. I didn't really get any, I got pretty unlucky. But uh, they are really, really cool for hunting like explosion weapons and stuff like that. Then we have things like Secrets of the Stone. Secrets of the Stone is actually insanely powerful when coupled with the uh, Platinum Stone that I'm trying to run at the moment. I haven't found it yet, but it's called Meticulous. And it is um, ritual altars, or there will always be four ritual altars in this zone. And if you have that, plus Secrets of Stone, you're always getting five ritual altars whenever you find ritual. And obviously you can force ritual with doing like the, the blood splinters. So that is like really, really good for this. So last thing, I didn't use this at all, but this thing, there's really good. Very strong. I wonder how much it would affect the harvest ones too. I wonder if it's worth it. Sexton modifiers have one additional use. Um, people are doing this for hunting... There is one sexton that's like Nemesis Monsters drop three additional currency items. Maybe I have one here. That one. Nemesis Monsters drop three additional basic currency items. Uh, and people are hunting that in like Valdo's Rest and doing the uh, the ultimatum stuff and just pounding, pounding out currency. Um, Steelmage has been doing that. I don't know if he has any videos on it or maybe any clips he could show you. But it's an insane amount of currency. And he said it's like 30 to 40 minutes to loot every map. Now you might have noticed I'm not just saying what nodes do you pick because it's a more dynamic thing so i'm trying to like educate you or i don't know give you as much information as you can but normally what i would have is at least close allies just the amount of zanas and juns and stuff like that that you're getting this is the same as like 140 awakening level was last part so it is very very strong i initially thought this was a noob trap until ember pointed out it's 140 awakening level it's actually a very very big amount um, and lastly, with this, you could like pretty much run infinite Zanas. It was insane. Um, and I, I really, really do like Paths Not Taken. It just gives you such a better chance of finding Cortex and stuff like that. I'm guessing Bottle Faith is quite expensive on Softcore, not just Hardcore. But yeah, really, really good. Uh, so that's pretty much all the information I have. But like I said, Paths Not Taken, Atlas Awaken, and Close Allies is normally what I would have as my base nodes. Depends a little bit what you really want to farm as well. Just wanted to make this quick video talking about it a little bit and uh, hope you guys are enjoying the league. Hope you're having fun in Ultimatum, getting a lot of good drops and yeah, hope you guys are enjoying the videos. Sub if you do like them, but more importantly, try to die less than I do.